welcome to Limbo Learnings and Ted Lasso. I want to walk you through nine actions he takes to do leadership so right. I've been fascinated with Ted Lasso for a while. When I watched season one, I haven't seen season two yet, uh, early and just saw it and thought, man, this is a beautiful example of what leadership can be like. Uh, the guy who leads our athletic focus, I was like, this is a site chef leader. He tracked on that too. It was such a beautiful conversation we had that day. And as I watched the first season, I just noticed uh, some characteristics of who he does. And we all know a Ted Lasso or Ted's opposite. We know a leader like Ted that we're inspired by, or we know the opposite, somebody that has done more harm than good in their leadership. And so what I want to do is walk you through nine actions he takes, and it's going to inspire us. It's going to help us be those kind of leaders or how to look out to partner up and be in uh, companies or on teams where we work for those kinds of leaders. So uh, here we go. Lesson number one in these limbo learnings, these moments where you're learning how to lead in the in-between moments. Number one, he's human. He's human. Every leader you've worked for or been led by was human. Now, what most do is they cover up their weaknesses and their frailties and their vulnerabilities and the things they're worried about, what others might think of them. Why? Because they think falsely that that's going to hurt their ability to lead. But really, only cult followers want that savior type of leader who has no flaws. Healthy followers can give their leaders respect because they see them getting better if the leader is getting better, if that's who they are. Healthy leaders inspire people with their mindset and their victories, but they also relax people with their struggles, with their vulnerabilities. So if you're only sharing the victories, you're not relatable. And if you're only sharing the losses, you're not inspiring. Human, we win and we lose. We advance, we get better, we do some things right, we do some things wrong. And we want to look at the trajectory. How are we doing? Are we getting better? That's the big question. And so in Ted's story, you see that. You see that he's human. Second action, he gets results by focusing on the process. He gets results by focusing on the process. Look, if you lead, results matter. If you do something uh, on a team, and if your leader isn't able to get the team going in the right direction and getting done what needs to get done, that's going to be a problem. But the worst leaders stay stuck on the scoreboard. They focus just on the win or the loss. Healthy leaders focus on the direction of the performance, the morale of the team, the culture, more than the perfection of it. They watch for the process, the process of the individual and the process of the team to continually get better. They watch for the process of skill development advancing. What happens when you're a Ted Lasso style leader, you love the process more than the anxiety of the performance. And you see that in the show. It's beautifully captured. Action three, he believes in himself and others when in new territory. So you see him stepping into a sport, you know, he's never coached as he's flying across the Atlantic and his approach and attitude towards it but even the way that he brings people up in the organization that wouldn't have been seen by many leaders. He believes in the potential of humans as they step out into new ventures doing new things. How does he do that? Because he's discovered that secret. And this isn't necessarily ever articulated, but it's a magic part of who he is. Internally, he knows that he has what he needs. You and I have what we need internally. It doesn't mean that we're not going to get wisdom. We're not, we're not going to get insight, better strategy, develop tactics from others. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we can trust the upgrading of our intuition, because sometimes our intuition can be wrong, but we can trust the upgrading of our intuition that we have what we need within ourselves to advance, to progress, to get an answer, to make a decision. So I love that about Ted. Action number four. He's friendly and strategic. Uh, an early mentor I had who was very impactful to me, I loved him as a mentor, found our relationship so enjoyable, but he saw me interacting with a team uh, uh, you know, that reported to me, a direct report team, and he saw me interacting with them and he saw me being very friendly and he pulled me aside. He's like, Chris, if you're their friends, you know, 
and he listed out some bad things that could happen. I don't even remember all the reasons he listed, but the idea was by being their friend, I was going to do some damage to accomplishing the results or whatever. That was a piece of advice that I rejected. And I actually stayed on the path I was on with that team. And I'm so glad I did. It meant more joy. It also meant more pain when some changes had to occur, but I wouldn't give that up. And I've led that way in leading teams since then for what, the last 20 years since he told me that. And I'm so glad that I have. And that's what you see with Ted. He's friendly, but he's also strategic. So it's not just about being their friend. It's about being their friend, but we're focused on this goal. We're trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to help you become better as a human. We'll get into more of that in one of the other actions. Action five, he only brings intensity when built on a foundation of clarity. He only brings intensity when built on a foundation of clarity. So kindness doesn't mean there's no passion. That's a misunderstanding of what it means to be kind as a leader. But when kindness is the foundation, when those moments are there and there's this passionate expression and there's something intense going on, well, because kindness is the foundation, there's trust. There's less misunderstanding by the other person. There's less miscommunication. They're not reading uh, bad motives into what you're doing. They're not running away in their hearts and minds with things that you're not actually saying. And you're not making them feel bad. It might be an expression of passion, but you're not tearing them down. You're not diminishing the person. person. And w when you learn as a leader how to let yourself express passion, but be sensitive to not diminishing the person, you have elevated to a place, Ted Lasso style, that very few leaders ever get to. Six, he watches the trifecta of performance, morale, and culture. Performance, morale, and culture. See, the best leaders understand all three of these cook together to make up the team, the organization, the pursuit of winning. And what they know, because these three are so important, is that they need simple, intuitive models on how to figure out what's happening right now with our performance, what's happening right now with our morale, and what's happening right now with our culture. You can think about it this way. Morale is, is the energy and the engagement, and you wanna build morale without manipulation. Too many leaders build morale with manipulation, and they try to like keep people engaged through crisis or pressure or forcing or whatever, all the things that are wrong. You also wanna to learn to watch performance without pressure. A lot of people try to get performance out of others by just increasing that pressure. And that's not what you do. World-class leaders, master coaches, Ted Lasso style, focus on the precision and accuracy of their feedback more than just the increase of the pressure. That's how you get the best performance. And then the culture. You want to build a culture without conformity. Culture doesn't mean making us all the same. Culture is making... Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to get into too much detail on that, but it's making uh, a direct focused importance on the vision, values, and strategy, the health of the relationships and the non-forced unity, and then what it means to keep improving the systems and have innovation. So for those of you paying close attention, I'm going to give you this. We have data-based assessments and simple models that we walk leaders through to help them zero in on the morale, the performance, and the culture without getting into manipulation or pressure or conformity. So email connect at siteshift.com and just put in the subject title, the big three reference that you heard it on this episode and we could share some more information for you, with you. Seven, seventh thing that Ted does that's so powerful, he's mastered new limbo moments. So limbo moments are just the in-between moments of life. It's when we're leaving what we've known. Now, some limbo moments have the anticipation of joy. Uh, they might have some anxiety mixed in too. It was like watching Ted going in to coach this new sport. Look, I know that some of you are facing some new things that make you feel some anxiety, but I think about it like this. If I'm speaking on a big stage or the first date I had with my wife, it was a blind date, the butterflies, you know, they develop. That, that can be translated in your stomach and in your heart and mind as anxiety. The trick is to learn to let the butterflies fly in formation. So what Ted, you could see it done, he's mastered new limbo moments when your heart beats fast and your stomach gets nervous, but you understand it's all how you frame it. Your body's having a reaction. Number eight, he's also mastered painful 
limbo moments. So again, limbo moments are the in-between moments. And sometimes they have pain and chaos and uncertainty as we're in between, right? And it's sometimes it's more difficult than we can even put into words. You know, maybe there's a part of you right now in your leadership and you don't like who you're becoming or you don't like what you have or what you do, or maybe you don't like a circumstance. That's just honest. And you don't beat yourself up for that. That's a limbo moment, but it can open up growth and insight and understanding as you go, okay, I don't like who I'm becoming. I don't really know who I am. You say, Chris, how's that positive? Keep going. But I know who I don't want to be. Okay. I, I don't really like what I have. You know, I don't really even know what I want, but I know what I don't want. See how you can take the negation, the negative, the dark, and start to build your way into the light with that. Or you might say, you know, I, I don't, um, I, I don't like what's going on. I don't even really know what's fully going on, but I know what I don't want to have happen. Ah, so you're starting to build an awareness. That's powerful. That's growth. And what you could see in Ted's moments is he's mastered these painful limbo moments as in the moment of his divorce, he was forgiving to a boss that used him because these limbo moments, it's that moment that makes you a healthy or unhealthy leader by what you do with it, which really takes us to the ninth one. He's transcended the give and take of leadership. Look, we all want something. We all desire. And when you're in the limbo moments, you start to get these clues about what you want. When you're in these in-between moments, you start to see your insecurities a little clearer. But the reality is we all have insecurities. Now, it's unhealthy leaders that try to get those needs, those desires, those insecurities met from the mission and the people. But if we go to the mission or the people to get our insecurities answered or comforted, then we're going to make people's lives worse over the long term. Because no matter how many results we achieve, we forget that the vision is the people and helping them become better and helping them grow and helping them develop. Jack Kerouac says, practice kindness all day to everybody, and you will realize you're already in heaven now. Leaders in limbo. That's where all the good stuff happens. And you either get distracted by hype and force and adrenaline and start to deform and dehumanize, or you get transformed. So wherever you find yourself, may you be inspired by Ted's example or any leader that you have that you're inspired by, look at what they're doing. If you have some that you're not inspired by them, do the opposite. And we're here to help at SightShift, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com, to help you be like Ted, be the most kind and strategic leader you possibly can be. Just reach out. Peace.